If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, for people who have encountered strange, terrifying, and otherworldly creatures or unknown beings out there, could it be a skinwalker, Bigfoot, tall pale creature, and the like? What was it that you saw? This is the first time I have ever heard reports of these gargoyles. I saw one back around 2005. I was walking on my grandmother's ranch in rural Nevada. We had no security lights on the property, so I carried a high-powered flashlight with me. I felt a sudden compulsion to turn my head to my right. In the beam from the flashlight, in front of my grandmother's chicken coop, about 15 feet from me, was an entity about 7 feet tall. It had its back to me, it halfway turned and looked over its left shoulder at me. Turned enough that I could see it was definitely male. He had a rather long bulbous nose, large wings down to his mid-calves, skin and wings that looked leathery, and was a taupe or pinkish color, there was no hair that I could see. He was also very thin, almost skeletal in appearance, with some sort of bony protrusions extending from the shoulders. I'll never forget it. Scare the crap out of me. I didn't notice any dead animals in the area afterward, if there were any. Okay, so I know technically there are no cryptids in Michigan like what I saw besides the dogman, which supposedly isn't near me, but the other night around 3 a.m., I was walking down the road and I saw this herd of deer running across the road, and then right behind them, this thing came out of the woods, and it was big, like deer size, but its head wasn't on its neck, it was on its shoulders, and it was way too big to be a coyote or a dog. It ran under a light, and I could see it was colored dark black, like its skin was black, and I say skin because this creature looked almost leathery, not anything like it was furry. It also cleared the main road in about two steps, just boom boom gone. We have no beers, no moose, no wolves, no buffalo, nothing that looks like this. And I know 100% that this was not a deer. Any ideas? So, I was having a conversation with my mother a few weeks ago. Once a few years ago, she told me a story involving her encounter with something in the woods of rural Alabama, maybe two miles from where she lives, which is temperate, slightly swampy land, which she described as hairy, with hair as long as say, a yak. Having the proportions of a grizzly in terms of size and a quadruped. Having a head similar to what she could only describe as an anteater, with a very long snout. Extremely swift on its feet. My mother was driving very slowly around a bend in the road when she spotted it, and she said it galloped much faster than her vehicle. I did my own research without much luck, but she's very curious and enlisted my help in finding out what this thing really is. Anyone have any good theories or parallels? Anything is appreciated. Last night, around 10 p.m. on June 3rd, I left a restaurant in Chicago's Lincoln Park neighborhood. We ate heavily and decided to walk a bit after our meal. We headed east on Arlington Street from Clark Avenue on a street with older buildings. We were just walking along looking at the buildings and discussing how nice they were when she grabbed my arm and asked me, what is that? I looked up and saw the tail end of a pretty large bird, bat, or person. I didn't really understand what we saw, she got a better look and described what was a giant bat that looked like a deformed man. I know it was all black and had no hair or feathers. I have absolutely nothing to gain from making this claim, it is 2 am and I still haven't slept. I promise whoever is reading this that what I saw was real and definitely not a person or animal that I could think of. I want to be dismissive and claim it was something I can understand, but I cannot deny what I saw with my own eyes. Mertztown is in Long Swamp Township in eastern Berks County, Pennsylvania. My son and I saw this monster thing last summer in Mertztown, Pennsylvania. We were parked on the side of the road in a heavily wooded area when this thing casually glided up the road. It looked big enough to carry a full-grown man away with no effort. When the wing flew over the hood of my car, we instantly dove down. This thing had a round human-sized head with no beak, hence the term man-bird, and huge bat-like wings. Now I would never tell this story if it weren't for my 16-year-old son sitting in the back seat, who also witnessed it on that summer day. I'm a pretty capable guy, not too many things can shake me, but this thing scared the hell out of me. Here is what I saw. The body was 5 to 6 feet in length easily, the wingspan was 25 to 30 feet easy. There were no feathers, bat-like skin, jet black, and a 4-5 foot skinny, rat or dragon, like tail that stuck straight out. This thing didn't fly like a bird, it glided about 10 feet off the ground at a very slow speed. After 50 to 75 feet of gliding, it took one huge flap of the wings, never changing elevation, and glided up the road till it disappeared into the woods. I'm convinced this thing lives underground, probably near some sort of hot spring, because it has no feathers. Well, that's my story. 
feel free to reply with any questions, that 45 second event will forever be etched into memory. I say we find it and catch it, I would love to see it again up close. April 1, 2016. I was visiting a friend who has a kid the same age as mine at a park in Woodbridge, Virginia, called Rolling Wood. It's a small park with a tennis court and playground that we've visited many times before. There's a concrete path where one can walk around the entire park. When one gets behind the tennis court, there are some backyards and then lots of trees. As our boys played, my friend and I walked the path and stopped at a little trail in the woods. We went in a few feet, looking up at the sunshine through the leaves, when we heard something. Both of us looked down an incline and saw something moving through the trees. We held still and were very quiet when we first noticed it. At first, it was hard to spot because it was so thin and moved so slowly. We could have easily mistaken it for a young tree rocking in the wind. But this was no tree. It moved how you would imagine an octopus would underwater, very steady and tranquil. It looked like a broom that was walking upright, it's a brush made up of many long, thin, white feelers that walked along the ground like a crab. The stick part itself looked oddly shaped and oblong. We were both terrified watching this thing as it elegantly floated toward a field with high grass, where it blended out of sight. I still don't know even how to categorize what we saw, but believe me when I say we both grabbed our boys and hightailed it out of there. It was truly a sight. It was like a walking stick on steroids. It gives me the creeps just relaying it. Stay out of the woods, kids. So as a preface to this story, I was driving on State Road 54, a road in Florida that goes all through the state and, for the most part, used to be all woods. It was 3.45 a.m., and I was driving to my friend's house, who lives 45 minutes away, to carpool to our job in a city about 90 minutes away from where he lived. I was leaving the city I lived in and was driving through the more heavily wooded areas at a red light. As I was waiting for the light to turn green, I saw the glow of two bright orange eyes. The woods were about 25 feet from the main road. The eyes got closer, like they hadn't seen me, and it looked 6 to 7 feet tall and thin, like quite thin. It was too dark to see features, but when our eyes connected, the thing bolted into the woods. It just didn't look human, frankly. At this point, I thought it might be a bear or something. As it was on, it was standing on its back two legs. And I mean, that son of a bitch was quick for its size. I have no idea what I saw, but the profile seems to look like a skinwalker or a wendigo. I have no idea. A long time ago. I was running at night. I live in a small, mountain-esque town near Seattle, Washington. I was turning down the street that leads to my home when I noticed something standing half in and half out of the woods up ahead. When I got closer, I realized it was a huge wolf. We get coyotes here, but this creature looked nothing like that. A huge gray wolf, if it stood up, it definitely would have been taller than me. The creepiest thing was that it was watching me, but not in an animal-like way at all. It was like it was studying me or trying to figure out what I was going to do. Of course, I had to run towards it to get to my apartment building. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I just kept telling myself, don't look at it. Don't look at it. I still don't know what it was to this day. We don't have wolves in the wild here. I don't know if I believe in the chupacabra, but these descriptions match it. I live in farm country in northwest Georgia, and I was driving down a dark road at night with my boyfriend. We could see an animal's eyes reflecting up ahead of us, and it began to cross the street. When our headlights hit, we realized it wasn't any local animal. It was about 3.5 feet tall, gray, hairless, and on two legs. It had animal-like legs. Kind of like kangaroo legs, but it had no tail. We didn't get a good look at its face. We saw enough of it to conclude that there wasn't any local wildlife. About two months before this, some friends and I were camping in a nearby valley. They had camp set up before I got there. When I showed up, they were packing their cars and leaving. I asked what was going on, and they said they saw some animal that charged at them, but they didn't know what it was. It really freaked them out. They gave the same description that I got. They said it was like a tailless kangaroo. Apparently, a few people around here have seen something like this. A few nights ago, my friends and I were just hanging around driving when one of them suggested we go to the park and watch the sunset over the lake. We got to the park at around 7.15, and we ended up making our way to the trail that led to the lake. My friend Ted ended up talking about cryptids and other shit and said we might encounter something at the park, as we were on native land. My friend Ted then indicated that there was something ahead of us, and we called his bluff and laughed at him. He then brought up a video of a sound effect of the goat man trying to scare us. My other friend Alex said it sounded like a skinwalker, and as you know, when you're on native land, you can't say that name out loud. 
Just to clarify, there was no one on the path except my friends and me, two minutes after he said that name, I looked behind us, and we saw we were being followed by something. It was tall, skinny, and moving very slowly towards us. I said under my breath, O-S-H-T, and my friends turned around and saw whatever I was looking at. I said to them that we should pick up the pace a bit, as it seemed a little weird that this thing came out of nowhere. We saw no indication of anything, no footsteps or rustling in the woods, and my friend said to me that once this thing appeared, they smelled something putrid, which in Native American lore means if you smell something putrid or disgusting, that's a sign a skinwalker is on your tail. So we ended up running as fast as we could down the trail to try and lose it. When we turned around, it was still moving at the same pace, very slowly. Thinking that we were safe, we started to walk at a normal speed. We were also close to a road with a bunch of cars roaring past us. Me being curious, I looked behind us to see if the coast was clear, and to my horror, I saw that the thing caught up to us. It was now at least 100 feet away, making no sound as it moved, and we were horrified to see that it had no face. My friends and I decided it was a good idea to bolt as fast as we could back to my car. When we got back to the parking lot, I saw that the only car that was left was my car, and whatever that thing was that was following us was horrifyingly real. I was walking my dog late at night, miles away from anyone, and I heard something whisper my name in the woods. I thought I was hearing things. A couple minutes later, I heard it again, and my dog pointed in the direction I heard it. This scared the shit out of me, and I got ghost bums all over my body. I turned around and started going as fast as I could, and that was it. I also heard babies crying in the woods late at night a couple times. My grandma has told me stories of the Kushtika, which seems scarily similar to the Skinwalker, which is what we natives call them up in Alaska, and how she was hunting with her husband and heard her name being called in the woods, but he was in the cabin. It is scary how similar these stories are, they may even be the same thing, and these stories have been told for thousands of years. So twice I've encountered this creature, and I've no clue what it could be. The first encounter with whatever this thing is was when I was running on a trail in the woods behind my elementary school. I got halfway through when I heard a UFO-esque warble. Something I've never heard before. I looked up at the tree I heard it come from and saw something that looked like a mix between what could have been a monkey and a bird. It had the body of a monkey or some mammal, four limbs and brown fur, and the head of a bird, a bird-shaped head with a beak and feathers. Also, after I spotted it and it ran off quickly, for the rest of the time I was on the trail, stuff kept falling around me. Like branches and acorns. And this didn't happen until I spotted it. I thought I was hallucinating after encountering it, but later that month I was on a different trail, behind my high school this time, when I encountered it again. I was going through the trail when I started to hear wolves howling, which is weird because wolves don't live in my area, to my knowledge. At that point, I started to pick up the pace because I didn't want to be eaten. Eventually I hear shit moving in the trees, and at one point I spot the damn bird monkey again. After that, the howling got closer, and stuff started to fall around me again. I'm usually calm, but I started to get a little nervous. Eventually I get to the end of the trail, and that's when I hear what sounds like a dog whimpering in a nearby bush. Shits are still dropping around me, and the howling is getting closer, but I stopped because it could be a dog in distress. I eventually left it without checking, though, because with everything going on, it probably wasn't a dog. I don't know if the howling and dog were connected, but I added it anyway as it all happened in the same encounter. I have no clue what the bird monkey thing is or its name, but any help would be appreciated. So a few weeks ago, I was driving home from work, I worked the graveyard shift. There's a curve in the road I have to pass that is set in a small expanse of woods. Well, this particular morning, I'm passing through, and this thing ran across the road. I can only describe it as a wraith-like gorilla thing. It ran on fours like a gorilla, but the shoulders and legs went higher up than they should have. It was weird as hell. I saw it for maybe four seconds as it dashed across the road into the woods. The most wildlife we have around here is some deer, foxes, and coyotes. But this was large, like I said, like a gorilla. I don't know what it was, I saw no other reports on this. Rationally, I try to dismiss it as tired eyes seeing things, but, tbh, I wasn't really tired, as I'm a night owl as it is. I was just curious what you guys think it may have been. I am from Austria. On the fourth day of my stay there, I was hiking around because the nature in that area is really nice. There was also a nice forest in that area that I decided to walk through a little. It wasn't night, it wasn't dark, it was in the middle of the day, and I was on my own when I noticed a funny smell. It smelled like there was a rotten animal somewhere around, but it also smelled like heated chocolate. Don't ask me, I know it sounds weird. 
I started looking around because the smell was so strong that I thought there must be something going on. I hid behind rocks when I heard some branches cracking north of me. I was afraid of bears, although I was told there are no bears in this area and I shouldn't be afraid. I still was, I couldn't help myself. 30 seconds after I started hiding behind those stones, I saw some beings. Kinda tall like myself, I thought, but I wasn't sure about it at first. I thought of a standing bear because I saw that on TV several times. But the noises that animal made weren't bear-like at all. It sounded like air in a way, like someone would use a really big fan. That's all the noise it made. This occasional flapping. After I hadn't seen or heard anything for 5 minutes, I decided to leave my house and walk away. After approximately 15 minutes of walking back the way I came, I heard those flapping sounds again and immediately dove. I sneaked behind the next best tree again. This time, I saw the thing. It was around 100 meters away from where I was, and I couldn't quite believe what I saw. What I saw looked like a large dude, maybe 7 feet tall. In a suit. He, or it, was kind of furry and wore a cape, or maybe wings of some sort. Hard to say. The thing had antennas attached to its head and also appeared to wear some kind of night vision goggles, but it was day. It moved quite fast and stressed out, and the cape occasionally made those flappy noises. It disappeared after 10 seconds or so. When I told my aunt about it, she kind of laughed it off and told me that it sounded like I was talking about the Mothman, a common legend in some areas. It was just today that I remembered the Mothman and looked it up. And what can I say? The thing absolutely looked like the Mothman. It could have been some guy, of course, but the question is, why would he walk around there and make those sounds and all? And what about the smell? Anyone else experience stuff like that and or knows what I am talking about? I was walking up to my local park with two of my friends. It was about 9. There is a path when you first walk to the park that leads to this elementary school that I used to go to. There is a fence on the side of it, it is gated, and on the other side of the path is just a hill leading to the park. There is then a street light on the path. We were walking past this, and one of my friends said, what's that? We looked and kept walking toward to seem like a dog. It was just frozen and staring at us. I got closer, and it ran away. Then I saw its spine, and it was nothing that I had seen before. It had short legs but was weirdly long. That's not where it gets interesting, though. We just walked up to the park. When we were leaving, about 10 minutes later, we were walking and wondered if we would be able to see it again. So we stopped and stared down the path. It's more like a concrete path. Then me and my one friend saw this stick man-like thing running down the hill toward the woods. It was going mad fast, it hit the feet. It was about 7 feet tall, maybe a little shorter. Pointed legs and arms, I didn't really get a good look at their heads. I saw it for maybe a good 4 seconds. It wasn't really black, it was like black and grey. I saw it clearly, it went in the direction of the street light. It was just running, and then before it got to the path, it vanished. It was terrifying, and I got the chills. I explained it, and then my other friend said he saw the same thing. My other friend didn't, though, I'd guy. We are going tonight again, at the same time, to do the same thing and see if we can get it on video. My friends and I were hanging out at the park after dark to smoke some Mary J. Everything was going just fine and dandy until the topic of folktales and such came up. We were talking about Bigfoot, Mothman, etc., and I decided to bring up a couple of creatures from indigenous mythology. I don't even want to type the name at this point because, as I learned that night, saying their name can summon them. Talking about a Wendigo, or as my friends and I refer to it now, a Winnebago, at a park after sundown was a stupid-ass decision. I can't say for sure that it was what I thought it was, but it was terrifying either way. After we brought it up, the coyotes in the woods surrounding the park started going nuts. I mean, you could hear them running around, howling, or just going crazy. It made me uneasy for sure, but I wasn't really worried just yet. We changed the subject and kept trying to chill, despite the noise. However, the coyotes were soon drowned out by some kind of whale. We had no idea what it was, but it just wasn't human. We knew that much. It was the kind of noise that chilled you to the bone, and you just knew something was horribly wrong. It was about then that we realized we had messed up. We're not complete and total idiots, we know what to do if you ever encounter something like this. That doesn't mean I wasn't terrified. We knew we had to get out of there, but we couldn't just run for it. That would be a mistake. Basically, the advice we had been given was that if you heard something, no, you didn't, and don't act like you did. Don't run, walk. Don't talk about it, just act calm and change the subject. So that's what we did our best to do as we tried to calmly walk to my car. BTW, 
we had stopped smoking long before this point, I was okay to drive. The wailing only got louder, though. It's really hard to try to keep the conversation about TikTok or whatever the duck we talked about on the walk over there, I don't even remember. The walk wasn't that short, either. We started getting closer when I started hearing a drumbeat. Just the random single hit of a hand drum. There wasn't anything around that I could see that could be making either of those noises. We managed to get in the car and out of the park. The wailing eventually faded out. When I thought we were safe, I brought up the drum beats and how much they freaked me out. As we were talking, we slowly started hearing the wails again. This was when we promptly agreed to shut the hell up, and none of us spoke a word about it for the rest of the night. The moral of the story is, don't talk about Wendigos, especially if you're at a park at night. Don't talk about flesh pedestrians either, skinwalkers. I've heard they're just as terrifying. I was on vacation with family in northern Michigan when we visited a family friend who had lived in the center of the county, in a dense forest. I remember when we pulled up, the road the house was on was a gravel road instead of a paved road. I remember looking down the gravel road and seeing it go down a hill and turn to the left in the forest. A few hours passed by, and I decided to go and check out where the gravel road went. I remember feeling extremely nervous because we were in black bear country, as I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago and had never experienced bears before. When I got to the top of the hill, I remembered hearing birds chirping and lots of frogs croaking. The forest felt alive, and I did not feel terribly unsafe, only nervous because of the possible presence of bears. As I started walking down the hill, I started whistling the Hunger Games four-tone whistle. As I got midway down the hill, I noticed that the birds and frogs stopped making noise, and the forest fell silent. At this point, my instincts kicked in, and I knew something was wrong. I remembered learning that the forest goes silent when there's a predator around. Yet, I still kept going down the hill. I was determined to know what was at the bottom of the hill. I was still whistling the same four-tone whistle when I heard something whistle it back perfectly. It made the same exact sound that I made. It sounded very oddly humanoid, like there was a person watching me, a predator. I remember being frozen in fear and just staring at the area of forest that it came out of before turning around and walking back up the hill. When the house came into view again, I sprinted until I got inside and did not leave anyone's eyesight for the rest of the night. Since then, I have not had any encounters like this, and I have never been back to the area. I don't know if it was something paranormal or if an actual person was watching me. Both equally terrify me to this day. If anyone knows any legends from Northern Michigan or Leelanau County, Michigan, please let me know. I was about 15 to 16 years old and walking home from a friend's place at about 2 to 3 o'clock in the morning with the friend I was living with at the time. My friend was pushing a BMX, and we were just talking and laughing as we walked home. All of a sudden, we saw what looked like two very large greyhounds jump over a set of mailboxes at some flats, apartments, and land in the middle of the road. The mailboxes appeared to be about 1.5 meters tall and about 5 to 6 meters from the road. At the moment, I thought it was a little strange, but I kept watching them. What I witnessed was something I will never forget in my life. The two greyhounds as they ran down the road appeared to both stand up on their hind legs and morph into a much bigger, beefier being, which I can only describe as looking like a yaoi, which I guess is the equivalent of a Sasquatch to our friends from America and other countries. These yaois both ran around a corner about 200 meters in the direction we came, and we both sat there dumbfounded. A few seconds later, we heard what sounded like a small female child scream in terror. Keeping in mind that it was around 3 a.m. in the morning and there were no children out, we both looked at each other in horror. Without saying a word, I jumped on the handlebars on the bike, and he pedaled that bike nonstop all the way home, about two kilometers away. When we got home, we locked the doors, as we had no idea what we had just seen or if they had seen where we went. After a little while, I asked him to describe what he had seen to me, as I was in disbelief, and he explained the exact same thing I witnessed. That is probably the scariest thing I have ever seen in my life. I have only told a few people about it, and I don't think a single person has believed me. They all say stuff like drugs and alcohol. Blah, blah, blah. This is a second-hand account, but it just happens to my son, his father, and stepmother, and I'm curious if anyone has seen anything similar. His dad says he was sitting around a fire with his wife, and our son was asleep on his shoulder. He saw a blurry, white figure that he described as looking like a KKK member but taller, about 600 feet away. It would come out of the woods about 10 feet, stop, and then go back into the woods. He said he watched it for quite a while, maybe two minutes, before saying anything to his wife, mostly because he couldn't believe his eyes. He said, Hannah, look over there, and she looked and said quietly, what the duck is that? 
As soon as she said that, it darted back into the woods as if it hurt her. He woke up and said, a monster is in the woods, we are going inside. Not the best thing to say to a 10 year old, but whatever, they were scared. When my son woke up, it came back out again, and he saw it too. Any ideas are welcome. Me and a friend went to the woods to barbecue over a fire, as we do now and then all year around. I live in Stockholm, and the woods we go to lie next to a lot of apartments. I have always been very into the Sasquatch slash Bigfoot subject, and I know it is real. We have them here in Sweden as well, what people refer to as trolls here is the same as Bigfoot or Sasquatch, the two being different names. However, me and my friend went into the woods to a specific place we always go to when we make our fire, barbecue, and drink beer. After a while, when the fire started, I grabbed a big stick, went to a tree, and knocked it hard three times. Ten minutes pass, and further into the woods, I see this orb just appear and hover about three meters above the ground. I stare at it, and I think to myself that this is not a person with a flashlight or anything like that at all. The orb just hovered at the same spot and then disappeared, and I thought to myself, wrong SHT is about to go down. Time passes, and darkness has fallen over the woods. Me and my friend sit in front of the fire where we hear a weird, weird noise, and my friend says, did you hear that? I looked over the fire into the darkness and saw dark yellow eyes glowing in the darkness, staring at us. I said, do you see those glowing eyes staring at us? Yes, he answered, that is not a human or an animal. I said, and he agreed. We stared at it for 30 seconds when it suddenly moved away, almost floating, leaving traces of the glowing eyes. I was creeped out. One week later, we go to the same spot, and it's dark. The fire is lit when we suddenly start to hear a tree break from the woods. A thick tree breaks, it starts from the left, moves to the right, and circles around us. The tree keeps moving around us, gets closer, and gets quiet for a couple of minutes. All of a sudden, 15 meters to the right of us, a big ducking tree break echoes through the woods, and I go holy SHT, and it gets quiet. Behind me and my friend stood this 5 meter long tree, and the fire was on a big rock, maybe 1 meter above the ground. Suddenly, something appears behind us and smashes the tree with a tree log. This thing broke in half minutes before. It hit the tree so hard that it hit the ground and swung back up again. Me and my friend jumped back like 2 meters. This thing hit the upper part of the tree, which means that it was huge and strong as hell. My friend turns on the flashlight and looks around, we see nothing, and it's quiet. The thing is, when me and my friend walked around in the woods, we were loud as hell, with twigs breaking and tons of other sounds under our feet. But this thing moves fast and silently around us, that's the scary part as well. I was scared as hell, so I left the fucking woods. I like the woods, but I get nervous and scared when I wander too far into the woods alone. One other time, when I was walking on a track, two stones came flying from above and landed in front of me. I looked up into the trees and saw this transparent shaped thing in the trees, and then it just disappeared. A buddy of mine owns a farm in the Ozarks. It has 40 thickly wooded acres and hollers in the back of the property that we use for hunting. As far as we know, he and I are the only ones who go on this part of the property. The neighboring landowned farmer says he was chased out late at night by a green orb and will never go back. We also shoot out there every night, so we know there is no human foot traffic back there. Being skeptics, we weren't bothered by the stories. One night after target shooting, we decided to head out of the woods and back up out of the holler towards his house at the top of the hill. We got out of the woods, right where the freshly stocked pond was, and decided to see how the fish were doing. We were just outside the tree line on the edge of the field, still far from the house. We heard a scream-like noise coming from the woods far away, almost like a coyote lost in the pack. We screamed back to see how close it would get to us. It was actually a beautiful night, and we decided to light a cigar and take in the view of the moon as we waited to hear something back. We faced back down the hill and blew our smoke into the air. I noted the air was alarmingly calm to him as my smoke carried on endlessly, never losing form. I noticed and brought to his attention how there was no noise at all anymore, not even crickets. We got really intentional and started listening harder, and that was when we heard an owl that hooted a couple times, probably 50 yards away. It actually brought some peace to my mind that I wasn't going crazy in the dark or something. We only had one headlamp, by the way, and my buddy was wearing it. At this point, the owl calmed my nerves, but this time my buddy let his cigar go out. He was on my left, one foot between us. He goes to light his cigar with the torch, gets it lit, and begins to puff it. Clap. A bright, quick, small explosion between our heads, like a TNT firecracker, goes off, and I flinch down and to the right because simultaneously I feel shrapnel or pebbles hit the left side of my head. 
my buddy flinches back because he feels shrapnel or pebbles in the front top of his forehead, where the headlamp is. I recovered and looked at him, then his cigar, and then our feet to examine what just happened. My first instinct was that his cigar had exploded. I asked him immediately, what the F was that? And he grabs his headlamp, frantically turning it off and back on, thinking his headlamp exploded, it continued to work perfectly fine and never stopped to this day. The flash we saw was brighter than the headlamp, and it never shut off in that moment, we stood there with our guns tighter and examined the ground for a pop snapper firecracker casing or something that had been thrown at us, and we listened to see if someone was messing with us, but after 5 minutes of not being able to explain it, we started to walk back up the rest of the hill and almost got to the house when it was like the volume in the woods was turned up on a dial. Immediately, as soon as we stepped out, the crickets were going louder than I had ever heard them before, and the wind was blowing again. We still don't know how to explain it. Was this supernatural? Extraterrestrial? A shaman or shapeshifter? Bigfoot is getting revenge on us for shooting in the woods all the time. We have actually gone back many times at night to find an explanation, but we haven't had any more encounters besides the feeling of being watched. During one of our day explorations, we found an 8-foot section shaped like a large human lying on its side right near that incident. Buddy laid in it and took a picture for comparison too. I would love help explaining this one. I am in Moorhead, Kentucky, and have been experiencing unexplainable things while I've been hiking around Eagle Lake or near Cave Run. I'm not a superstitious person, and I am very rational when it comes to the animals in our region. It will sound as if something is approaching, coming much closer than any animal should, and when noticed, I react, stomp my feet, etc., it stops. An unrelenting dread and overwhelming anxiety fall over me, I cannot shake it, and I know I have to leave at that point. Each time, as I've started to leave, whatever it is has charged quickly, coming much closer and essentially chasing me from where I've been. I refused to return to Eagle Lake after experiencing it for the first time and chose to go to a pretty popular area near Cave Run. The same exact thing has happened more than once. I have not been able to shake the feeling. I have definitely been the only one in the area on both occasions, and there have been no animals near, definitely not ones large enough to make the sounds I've heard. My girlfriend has been with me on each occasion and has heard and felt the same as me. If anyone has seen, felt, or heard anything, please let me know. I wish I could believe it has somehow been the exact same creature exhibiting the same behavior four or more times in different areas, but it has become hard to do so. My girlfriend and I both agree that it so clearly felt like something wanted us gone. We've gone out so many times and have never experienced anything like this before or held any anxiety about going out. I carry, I'm not afraid of wild animals in our area. I realized I sound crazy, but I really am just wanting some help or answers. Some extra info. It will initially sound bipedal, very clear steps, always behind or to the side of us, and large. Definitely human-sized or larger. Once we notice it and address it, there's silence. Never more than 10 feet away, sometimes as close as 3 to 4 feet when we aren't turned and searching for it. Always coming towards us, except when we've noticed it and it seems as if it pauses and slightly retreats. We always decide to leave because of the disgusting we're going to die feeling that overtakes us. Every time we've left, it comes closer than before and no longer sounds bipedal. It is fast, intentional, and nothing like the sounds of a deer or other large, four-legged thing. Sometimes it will sound like the brush is being torn apart during these moments. As soon as we're back in a clearing, there's silence again. I'm never able to see anything, which is what's always bothered me because we should be able to see something, literally anything. Has happened during the day and night. One night about 10 years ago, me and my best friend decided to stop by a local hangout of ours in Bowie, Maryland, to smoke a cigarette before he dropped me off at home. We grew up here and spent our early years wandering the rail tracks and woods, smoking and drinking as children do. So this one spot is a railroad overpass at 450 and 197. There's a parking lot and a small area of grass and trees, about a 30-foot strip of land separating the tracks and the lot. So it's nighttime, and we decide to go there to smoke a cigarette. We go on the tracks, and we're facing the parking lot, so the overpass is to our left, and the tracks go on to our right. This way, we're still barely in the glow from the yellow parking lot lights. Now we're smoking and he's talking, but the entire time I'm focused to my right, peering down this track because I have the strangest feeling. I didn't know what it was until later, and it was the feeling of being watched by a predator, which I've never experienced before. After about two minutes, we're almost done with our cigarettes. A helicopter flies right above us, seemingly at tree level, with the spotlight briefly going right over us, coming from the direction of the overpass. Not five seconds later, I hear the gravel shift from between the tracks, and I look towards the overpass. 
standing right in the center of the overpass, there is this giant silhouette. Now that it's dark and it's under the overpass, I can only see its silhouette. It's about 8 or 9 feet tall and burly looking. It appeared as if its head was attached to its torso, completely bypassing any semblance of a neck, the way super jack dudes look. It was huge, and we only looked at it for about a second before I said, let's go now. Now we are hurriedly starting to rush away, and we hear the gravel move closer, and not three seconds later, we both hear the most demonic, horrifying, multiple pitched screech literally right behind our heads. It came from no more than a foot behind us. So of course we booked it for his car, and no, we didn't look back because, are you ducking kidding me? Get real. We get to his car, and funny thing, his lanyard got stuck around the steering wheel, and when we pulled out, his keys pulled out of the ignition as he turned the steering wheel. Anyway, we drive around for an hour, and the only thing we could say is what the duck, and that's my encounter with the goat man. Now, a week later, we're hanging out with our friend, let's call him Andy. Now Andy has spent a lot of time in the woods, and he was telling us about how last week the cops were out in the woods because they heard screams and thought a woman was being killed. Now I asked him if they had helicopters out, and he said yes, and I asked him what day it was, and it was the same night we saw the goat man. So we told him our experience, and he was like, yeah, that was him, you saw the goat man. I've spoken to a few others who have actually seen it and give a similar description to mine, as well as the picture found online if you search for Bowie Goatman. I was 16 at the time, and my family would go hunting at a deer lease in Comfort, Texas. This was my first year hunting a stand by myself, which I was really excited about, so we got to camp, and on the first day and night, I saw no deer. I was a little disappointed to not have seen any deer at the stand either time I went out. Flash forward to the next day. I decided to hunt a different stand in the morning on the other side of camp. There were tons of doe but no bucks, so I went back to camp and decided to try the stand from the previous day one more time. Keep in mind that my first hunt of the day takes place from around 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. and my night hunts from around 5 p.m. until sundown, so I have my dad drop me off at the stand, and he wishes me luck. I thanked him, and he drove off. The hunt was going great, but for some reason, the bucks seemed to be running towards my feed. I thought they were running after me because they were in a rut or something. Anyway, I finally saw a big 12 point, and I got it, so I'm waiting in my stand now for my dad to come pick me up. The sun starts to completely set, so I get out of my stand to go walk and stand by my deer for pickup, but as I was walking, something I hadn't seen in my stand was in the woods to the left of me. I heard it first rustling, and then steps later, I saw its head peering out from behind the tree. A massive buck is what I thought at first. Excited, I got on one knee and shot at it, not even putting my ear protection on. The shot was one-tenth the distance from the other deer I shot, yet when I thought I hit it dead in the chest, it stood there totally unfazed before stepping out completely and just staring at me. Here, I started to panic. This massive buck is staring me down after I shot at it. It's going to charge me. I reload my rifle and take another shot. And I reload it again and take another. Still nothing as it stared at me. It tilted its head as if taunting me or trying to understand my desperation. Its eyes were lifeless. It began to walk towards me, and I finally closed my eyes and shot at it one last time. I heard it jump, and it slowly walked back into the tree line. Its eyes were not leaving me once until it was fully back in the woods. The thing that haunted me even more is that I swore I saw it smirk at me as it was leaving. Not 10 seconds later, I heard my dad's truck. We threw my deer in the truck, and my dad asked what all the shooting was. I told him the story, and he brushed it off as crappy aim. After a while, I kind of convinced myself that too, but now, as I have shot deer off the truck bed while it's moving, I've taken the same kneeling shot at worse angles and hit it, and now I read a story about something called not deer, and it just seems so accurate to what I had seen at first. I thought maybe she was a skinwalker, but I don't know. I haven't seen it out there since, but I was wondering what people thought of it. I'm a teenager, I won't disclose my age, and I go to a public high school in Perthshire, Scotland. It's mostly a rural area, with mostly towns, villages, and houses dotting the landscape, although there are two major cities in my area. The high school I go to is in a medium-sized town, and for privacy reasons, I will not disclose its name. Not many people have had many paranormal encounters, although a few people claim to have seen ghosts and whatnot. Anyway, onto my encounter. I live in a large-ish house in the middle of a field with my family. It's not too far from the town I go to school in, but I usually take the bus in just because I'm a lazy git. Sometimes, me and my mates, let's call them E, J, and C, take a path through a nearby forest to come back to my place, where we just play video games, that sort of shit. 
This particular night, my parents were out of town, and we decided to drink a bit of booze that we had in the mini fridge in my room. I didn't try much, I'm not much of a drinker, and beer's not my thing, or C's, really. E and J, however, went all out. It got really late, or rather, early, and they decided to leave and head home. I said bye to them, then headed back up to my room to play some more video games. About half an hour later, I heard a loud banging on my door. It was J and E. I let them in, and they started panicking. C goes home a different way than them, he lives a bit closer to me than the others. E and J said that they were walking through the woods when they saw a tall, skinny looking bloke pelting it towards them. They panicked and legged it back to my house, while the skinny fella gave chase. My mind went back to when another friend, somewhat of a paranormal buff, told me about when Digos and skinwalkers. I called 999 and said that a prowler was lurking around our house and had chased my friends back to my house. I gave the operator my address and said that they'd have a car or two to my house in an hour and a half, apparently there was a big traffic incident. In the meantime, she said, arm yourselves, lock all doors and windows, and lock yourself in a room. We did that, grabbing knives from the kitchen and barricading ourselves inside my bedroom. After a while, we heard heavy footsteps around our house, and thinking it was the police, I peered out of the window. What I saw was much worse. It was E. It looked exactly the same as hers. I knew that she was sitting and crying in my room. I freaked out, and it saw me. What the he liss that th and ing whatever the duck was outside could speak, and it sounded exactly like J. It was a skinwalker. I remember the description from my horror weirdo friend. It looked like my friend, but it sounded like my other friend. It must have been confused, and that made it scarier. We heard sirens, and the thing ran off into the woods. We told the police officers everything, and they checked it out. The officers left after saying the woods were clear, then muttered something about ducking prank callers. After they left, we heard an inhuman shriek, but sort of human-like. We didn't sleep at all that night. I believe that what we saw was a skinwalker. I hope to God Almighty that I never have to face that bloody thing again. So this has been on my mind since I saw it Saturday night. I'll start with a few months ago, when it was winter. I live on the Canadian West Coast. I think there was a bit of snow on the ground, and the sun had just set, so it was not completely dark out yet, but not light either. My sister and her boyfriend, and me and my boyfriend, were in our backyard. I think we just went outside briefly to run around in the snow, since where we live, it's actually a rare occurrence. My sister all of a sudden freezes and says she sees something or someone behind a tree. She then walks over to it, and she sees it disappear. She freaked out, she wanted to go back inside, so we all went with her. When inside, she told us what she saw was a large, black-winged creature sitting behind a tree, looking in our direction. Apparently it was sitting with its wings down, covering its body, kind of hunched. Then, when she got closer, she saw it turn the other way, covering its face with its wing, so it wasn't facing her anymore. It moved further away behind the tree, and once she was close enough to see it, it was gone. None of us believed her. We all told her it was probably just a raven, a herring, or a shadow. But she was sure she saw something huge, with wings. We let it go, but she was clearly freaked out. Fast forward to this past Saturday. My boyfriend and I, my sister and her boyfriend, same people as before, were all in my bedroom, which is the master bedroom of the house, and we have these French doors that open up onto the sun deck and look out into our backyard. We were just about to smoke some weed together when my boyfriend opened the door to the sun deck and looked up past our backyard to see this massive bird leave a branch in a tree. He said, holy SHT, that eagle is huge. I looked up just in time to see it leave the branch and fly for, like, two seconds before it disappeared behind more trees. But it was bigger than an eagle, for sure. It wasn't in a tree in our backyard, but we have this embankment that goes up to these apartments that are next to us, and the tree we saw the thing fly off was up there. So it wasn't really clear, but we have eagles around us often, and I have never seen one that size. It looked like its wingspan was almost 14 feet long. It was completely black. My sister and her boyfriend just missed it, but when they saw the tree branch, it came off, still bouncing up and down from jumping off. I said it looked like a human with wings, and my sister freaked out and reminded us of the time she saw that thing in the backyard. All of us had forgotten about it until she told us about it again. Now I actually believe her. My boyfriend said it looked like a human with wings, but he doesn't believe in stuff like that. Plus, on top of this, we had a dog who passed away in January, RIP Juno, I love you, but she would sleep on the sun deck if it was warm enough for her and often we could hear her growling at something in the backyard and pacing back and forth. 
It could have been a deer in the backyard or a raccoon. But my dog was uninterested in deer in her old age, and raccoons used to come on our deck all the time and we would hear them, but this time it was different. This happened just yesterday, as I was visiting my parents and was trying to rest in my mom's bedroom. All I was aware of this whole time was hearing my dad frantically walking around the house with his shoes on, going in and out of the house repeatedly, and walking up and down the stairs to the basement, until he opened the bedroom's door and quickly apologized, saying he momentarily forgot I was there. He later told me that when he was watching TV with my mom in the basement, he just felt the need to go outside and could not explain why. It was just a strange gut feeling urging him out. He put on his shoes and walked into the backyard. He described feeling off the moment he walked out, like his surroundings weren't real, as if he had stepped into a dream or something. He then heard a loud thump coming from inside the shed. He unlocked the door and checked inside, and found some items that were placed at the back of some shelves, leaning against the wall, had fallen down. There was no way, according to him, that these would be able to fall down on their own without being physically pulled off the shelf. Soon after, he heard a somewhat loud, strange wailing coming from the sky. It did not sound like any animal he had ever heard. For context, my dad is a country boy, born and raised in the woods. He knows what strange sounds animals regularly make. But he has been living with my mom in the suburbs for over 40 years. So he looked up and saw a very large, bird-like creature flying. It looked like it was fairly far up, yet still pretty big, so he assumed this animal was unusually large. He says it was far bigger than any bird he'd seen in his life and it did not look like any bird he'd seen either. He claims that this bird had a long, pointed appendage protruding from the back of its head, like a pterodactyl has. This bird didn't look like it had any feathers either. He said it's hard to confirm because it was far away, but it did not have the typical texture of a bird's feathers and instead looked more like skin or fur, and its wings were shaped like those of a bat. He did not flap his wings in a movement similar to that of a regular bird either. This thing flew slowly above the house and above the street, making those odd cries. My dad ran inside the house to get my mom, but he couldn't find her. He did not find her in the basement or outside and started checking all rooms, until he opened the room I was in. After that, he couldn't see or hear the bird anymore. My mom was still watching TV downstairs. The window of the bedroom I was resting in was wide open, and I could hear all noises outside clearly, from my dad walking on the porch to neighbors discussing next door. My dad is half deaf and has a hard time hearing higher pitched sounds, so for him to hear those cries, they must have been at least moderately loud. I did not hear any of those cries my dad claims to have heard. I did not hear any unusual or particular noises that could be mistaken for cries or wailing by an old man's poor and distorted hearing. I later told my partner, who is native to Central America, about this strange encounter my dad had, and he told me my dad's description perfectly fits the traditional description of a thunderbird. I don't know what to think about it, though. A few summers ago, my family decided to vacation in a quaint mountain village in Alberta, Canada, called Banff. The first couple of days were spent in town, visiting different museums, shopping, etc. One morning, we went to a breakfast diner that had different articles hanging on the walls. Intrigued, I took a closer look. Most of the articles were about the history of the town, which seemed rather boring, but one of them stood out to me. It was a story about how a pack of gigantic bears ran from out of the mountain and through the town without any actual reason. They didn't attack anyone. They didn't even really look at anyone. They just ran. When we were seated, my dad began asking our waitress questions about the article, but she just pushed it off and said that the event happened a long time ago. The next day, we packed our rental car to visit Banff National Park, which is a hiking trail that leads through the mountain. On our way there, a pack of elk strolled out of the forest and in front of our car. This doesn't really relate to the story, but it was cool, and I wanted to include it. Anyway, we were driving through the middle of nowhere on a steep mountain when we spotted a park ranger squatting down and glaring into the trees. We stopped the car. My dad rolled his window down and asked what was going on. The ranger informed us that there was an injured female grizzly bear spotted there about an hour ago. He told us that one of her babies was found, skinned and half-eaten, about a mile away. They knew the baby was hers because they either painted a streak on the fur or placed a tracker, I forgot, after having a short talk with the ranger, who refused to tell us anything else, we arrived at the trail. Before entering, my dad gave us a lecture on mountain safety. He made it very clear to always be with someone and not stray from the path. Because of my rebellious slash retarded teenage brain, I broke both of the two most important rules. I was really starting to feel dizzy and nauseous from walking for so long, so my parents told my brother to stay with me on a bench while they finished the trail. Above the bench we were sitting at, 
there were a few gigantic rocks that led up to a higher level in the mountain, if that makes any sense. I asked my brother if he wanted to climb the rocks and explore the other level with me, but of course, he said no. I told him that I just wanted to climb up quickly, see what it looked like, and then come down, so he gave me permission to go by myself. When I reached the top, it was mostly forest. There was no light, except for two small dots that I could just barely see in the distance. My stomach dropped as I squinted my eyes at the dots, they were not dots. They were eyes. Bright pink eyes. The body that they were attached to makes me want to cry. The head resembled an elongated wolf's face, with the antlers of a bighorn sheep. The body looked like nothing I had ever seen before. It looked like a 10-foot tall malnourished wolf, except for the arms, which almost looked human, there was still something very off about them. The entire creature was black and gray. The thing began slowly tiptoeing sideways towards me. I was too scared to speak or move, so I just fell to my knees and tried to look past the creature. As soon as I changed positions, the creature made a strangely quiet clicking noise and dashed away. Apparently, I fainted from the dizziness of walking for hours on top of the terror. Whenever my family asks me what happened up there, I pretend like I forgot, for they would never believe me. I did a lot of research on the area and what I saw, but couldn't find much. I couldn't even find the article that was in the diner. I have no idea what I saw that night, but I can bet you anything that it skinned that baby grizzly and scared the bears out of the mountains. I would run like hell too if that thing ever showed up again. I grew up about a half hour's drive away from Boston in a house that's easily 200 years old. It was built into the side of a hill, and when you first walk in, to your immediate left are stairs to the second floor, and to your immediate right is the living room, which has a bay window. So 15 years ago, my mom used to go to work at 3 in the morning. I was always a night owl, and I remember it was a month before Easter and a Saturday because I didn't have school. She had already gone, and it was getting close to 4 a.m., so I went to turn off that little lamp and go to bed. I took my glasses off and went into the kitchen, and I heard a little clicking. I looked to my left, towards the open doorway to the living room. It was my German shepherd, Jade, who always slept by my bed. So I leaned forward and said, What are you doing out here, Jade? Just then, I heard my dog jump off my bed from my room. That was when I realized the thing I was looking at was most certainly not my dog. It stood perhaps three feet tall, had two legs, and had wrinkled skin. It had somewhat leathery, pointed ears that stuck out from its head and reddish-brown hair. It had a disheveled look, you could see the individual hairs and even a widow's peak, through the soft lamplight into the room beyond, and it wore what looked like hides to me. It even had some kind of moccasins or boots on, enough that they clicked on the tile when it walked. The thing took a few waddled steps towards me and outstretched its hands like you picture in your head in any monster movie. I did the only thing I could, being 16 with no cell phone, no camera, and nobody home, you're not Jade. I ran to my room, slammed and locked the door, and kept my light on, not leaving until the sun came up. I didn't go to bed until that afternoon, when my mom came home. I don't sleepwalk, I've never had sleep paralysis, our CO detectors were regularly checked by the city, and I have no history of mental illness. Swear to God it happened. I live in North Carolina, Durham specifically. My family lives in a standard two-story house in the middle of a run-of-the-mill neighborhood, lots of intersecting roads, etc. On the night of the question, about two nights ago, my family was going to visit a relative who had given birth recently in Greensboro, so I had the house to myself. I was getting home at around 8 or 9 and decided to bring my dog in. She stays outside in the kennel for the day until we bring her in for the night. Our house has a garage attached to the left of it, and the garage has a back door that leads into the backyard. Her kennel is just to your right as you exit the door, with a 4-5 to five foot clearance slash path in between it and the garage, there is also a bed of rock just up against the house, this will be important. She had recently been taken to the vet for her distressed behavior, which is why I had to stay home to be with her. The evening went fine, I watched a movie to pass the time. I then decided to take her out to use the bathroom before being put up for the night, around 12 to 1. This is where I lost my shit. I took her out the back garage door with her long leash, I was wearing socks and didn't feel like getting them soaked. She usually does her business in that little clearing between the kennel and garage, so I let her walk down through it. Our garage has a single light on the back wall, not LED or really bright, so I can see her somewhat well while she does it. She's facing me when suddenly her backside lifts almost one or two feet into the air. Paranormal or not, I ducking screamed at this, I assumed some wild dog or something had tried to drag her. She runs back to me, and I hear rustling among the rocks, and this figure stops right as it enters visible view in the light. I've never seen anything like it in my life. 
It was tall. I'm six foot two, and I had to look slightly up to see where I thought its head was. It was pale, but not white or gray, it was just a normal pale flesh color, like someone who spends a week or two indoors. It was lanky, not really anorexic or anything, but definitely disproportionate. It looked at me for a good one to two seconds before it backtracked in the quickest manner I could ever replicate. As soon as it went, I booked it back inside. I was torn about calling the police if neighbors who had heard my scream hadn't. Behold, almost half an hour later, the police arrive in my driveway. I told them that I had seen a man in the backyard, leaving out the whole tall demon shit going on. I have been contemplating whether it was some creature or some NBA-bound nude meth head. Once again, I don't count myself as a believer in Bigfoot or Mothman, but I really don't know what the duck happened. I'm most definitely not taking the dog out alone anytime soon. What the hell is this thing? Why was it in a suburban neighborhood? Should I bother telling my family when they get back? One morning, my brother and I were heading to the car for school. It was still a bit dark outside, but you could see the sun coming up. I remember the sky having a sort of greenish tint. We typically don't use the front door at all and usually just use the side door to the house. We have one large storm door, and then your typical glass door on the outside of it. As we are heading outside, I reach for the handle, and my brother stops me mid-reach and pulls me away from the door. He can see outside as the door is glass, at the time, my house was also completely surrounded by woods. You cannot see it from the street either. My brother points to what he sees, and as I remember, it was incredibly tall. I was, of course, very small at the time, so you'd think, oh, maybe it just appeared larger to us because we were kids. But I swear this SHT was like 7 feet tall. This thing looked almost solid white or gray, and it had what looked like three dark circles or holes going down its body. We knew this thing was abnormally tall because of how slow and big its strides were. It almost looked like slow motion in a way. It was also just the body and two legs. That's all it looked like. I'm not even sure if there was a face or a head. It was walking at the edge of our woods, and it seemed to be heading to the backyard. Sort of minding its own business, i.e., I don't have any memory of what happened after, but my mom has always said that right after it happened, we ran to her and my dad, crying and panicking. She said she separated us and asked us separately what happened. We both described the same thing and told the same story. My mom said it freaked her out pretty bad as well. I remember my brother and I trying to guess what we saw, and all we could think was that maybe it was a dying animal walking. Because it could have been bone that we saw. But I remember it wasn't limping or dragging any skin or anything. It was walking perfectly straight and upright. A few years later, we started hearing this horrible screaming at night. I know there's foxes, owls, and all that other stuff that screams. But this thing would run around the house. Like a circle around the house in the middle of the night, on and on. I would hear it in my sleep, and it would make me have horrible nightmares of my family being eaten. This happened for a short period of time. My dad had finally had enough, and he got a permit to shoot and take out whatever it was. As soon as he got the permit, it quit. I never heard that thing again, and we have lived here for 13 years. I'm not sure if it's related but I struggled with terrible sleep paralysis for a few years, and it was only at this house. I would wake up, unable to move, and have a man or woman screaming into my ear. I would finally be able to move and instantly cry out of fear and actual pain in my ear. I would also sometimes be paralyzed and feel my body going up. My body wasn't going up, but I was. Whenever this would happen, I would be fully conscious and aware. I could hear myself in my head, and I just kept saying, put me down. Put me down. I am not going up and I would slowly go back down, but it would always take so long, it felt like. This used to scare me to the point that I was afraid to even fall asleep. Eventually, I talked to a few different mediums, and they gave me advice that helped. Anyway, I could go way more into that topic, but that's not what this is about. I have had a few true experiences with the supernatural and spiritual, and I will probably share them here as well. Overall, I am hoping someone could give some useful insight on this situation. Maybe it isn't what I think it is, and someone else has a better answer. My heart rate has been going bonkers while typing this. It was around 2015 or 2016. I remember it being in the summer, the trees and brush were still full and lush. My wife and I live on 12 acres of land in Mount Julia, Tennessee. The land was mostly wooded, with maybe three acres around the home cleared out with the exception of randomly spaced trees. Two acres in the front yard and about one acre in the back. The house was built in 1969, and the state of the home was original to the year, down to the shag carpet. We originally moved in back in 2014, and over the years of living there, we gradually worked on remodeling when we had the extra time and money. 
the land had two small barns on the property, which we turned into chicken coops. We also decided to add a sheep. Side note, the home itself always had an unsettling feeling, the basement had a dark, evil feeling with a freezer full of animal carcasses and a gallon bucket full of frozen blood that was there when we moved in. But that's another story of its own. So over the span of living there, we had problems keeping our chickens alive, we couldn't find how something could be getting in. One day we got home from grocery shopping in the early afternoon to find all of our chickens dead and spread across our backyard. It didn't make sense. We had that heavy-duty hardware cloth wire caging that was torn like something clawed through it. We're concerned and weren't sure of what to do, after all, we had the sheep to worry about. I began setting out at night and at different times of the day when I had the time. I thought maybe I could hunt whatever it was that was killing our animals, but nothing ever showed up. We kept a close eye on our sheep as best we could, making sure he was well protected. That was until one random morning we went out to feed him and found him out of his stable and lying there in the backyard, not moving. We still don't know how he got out. He had no explanation for what happened to him. The only thing coming to mind is a fear-induced heart attack. Now onto the sighting. Like I said, it was summertime. I had the windows open because our AC wasn't working very well on the second floor, and I was trying to get a breeze through the house. My wife was at work while I was working on putting our laundry away in our upstairs bedroom. I began hearing this deep growl sound and a slightly higher pitched growl sound with it. I couldn't tell what it was, so I stuck my head out the window to listen better. I could hear coming from the woods on the right side, slowly getting louder and getting closer to being in view. As the sound drew near, my heartbeat sank. I felt fear and dread. I was scared, but I wasn't sure why. That was until it came into the clearing. There it was. This giant werewolf is walking across my front yard. It was walking on all fours, it had a giant canine head, a large humped back, and a long bushy tail, and its fur was thick on its chest and back and thinned out on its legs. Its joints bent like ours as it walked, its back legs bent like our knees do, and its front legs bent like our elbows do. As it was walking into the front yard, I was able to measure it up by it walking past a tree. It was at least five feet tall, standing on all fours to its shoulders. So I imagine it being seven or eight feet tall on its hind legs. The slightly higher pitched sound was coming from behind it. Following behind was an identical pup. I was in such shock that I couldn't move. Frozen by what I was witnessing, I didn't even think to try to photograph it. I guess in that moment, I didn't want to miss anything. It carried on across the front yard, going deeper into the woods. I told my wife about it and never saw it again after that day. I also never went outside without protection after that. We ended up moving out in 2018. I was just wondering if anyone else has had any encounters like this in Tennessee or anywhere else. We used to live on a secluded dirt road, well, in the middle of a 40-acre plot away from the road. Our property joined a huge state park at the back, 25 miles from the nearest town in Missouri. We were about 13 years old, around 2003. We were babysitting our younger siblings, so it was us and four younger ones, our parents were out for the night. Obviously, we were no strangers to the woods, we knew the whole property well and would even walk the two miles between our houses as free-range kids. So it's way past dark but we have a pole light by the house. It's summer, so it feels great outside. We were all playing tag or hide and seek, running around. I ran around the corner of my house, and I saw something white like a flash run behind the propane tank, then the well house. Our backyard was clear, besides the small well house and propane tank, the woods are probably 150 yards away, so there are not a lot of places for an animal to hide. Ash saw it too. The kids are still playing, and we thought it was a stray dog, even though this thing was crazy fast, way faster than a dog. Up until that point, we had no reason to fear anything in the woods, we don't have large predators. So we're like, oh, poor dog, let's check it out. We sprint over around the well house and see a crouched white thing. I remember its hands were long fingered. It was matted and dirty, smelled like death and shit, and my mind couldn't quite even comprehend its face, but it had a long, kind of upturned nose and no hair on its face, like a snarling dog pig. I don't really remember the eyes, but I think they were black and yellow, all I know is that they looked evil and inspired fear I hadn't known. At that moment, we screamed and ran, and the thing dashed off into the woods as I looked over my shoulder. The kids hear a scream and know something's wrong, we scream at them to get in the house, and we lock the doors. I couldn't keep my eyes off the back windows, like I didn't want to see it, but I had kids to protect, so I felt like I needed to know if it was there. We were just scared and pumped with adrenaline, and we couldn't even speak about it. We got the kids calmed down and to bed finally, and I talked with Ash, and she saw the same thing I did. My parents got home, and we broke down, freaking out, 
crying, and pointing at the well house. My stepfather even went out there with a gun, we were so adamant. They told us it was probably a feral hog, and we were just tired or something. We didn't tell anyone at school, and we never brought it up again. After the reunion, I asked my brother, who was six years younger than me, he was about seven, if he remembered that night we saw a monster at my mom's old house. He said no, and I started talking about how I forgot about it until Ash brought it up and about how we saw something run behind the well house, and he interrupted me and asked, was it white? I say, yeah, and he asks, did it have a face like a weird dog? I nod. His eyes get big, and he basically starts yelling, omg, I saw that thing down the road from there a few years ago. And freaking out, there were visible goosebumps on his arms. He says he was driving the dirt road with his girlfriend at the time, hauling ass like always, but on the really rocky patches, he would hit the brakes and drive slowly over the rocks. He saw something in his headlights standing about 10 feet from the ditch, so he still thought someone put a weird statue out there, but its eyes followed him, and its face was sweaty. It was white but muddy, had a dog face and long fingered hands, and stood on two legs at least six feet tall. Its eyes followed him as he passed it, and he looked in the rear view mirror and saw it dash away into the trees. He asked his girlfriend if she saw it, and she just nodded. They never spoke of it again, and he never told anybody. He said he kind of blocked it out until I brought up the monster at mom's. I did stop playing in the woods after that day in 2003 and started doing sports and teenagery things. Ash stopped walking to my house, and we grew apart. Now my brother and I are creeped out as hell. I need to call my mom. So this happened a few nights ago. I'm not entirely sure if what I encountered was a skinwalker, but here goes. I live in a small to medium-sized town, not a large city, in a suburban neighborhood that's situated close to the Fraser River. Everything around here is mostly wood, and there's also a large forest service road system a few blocks away that goes quite far into the bush. So here's what happened, this was all later at night, around 11.30pm me and my girlfriend were in the gravel lot, in my SUV, across from the high school where we were talking, and she eventually fell asleep as we had been walking around all day and the fair was in town. About 15 minutes after she was asleep, I started to get an eerie feeling like I was being watched and had a feeling like we had overstayed our welcome. I didn't like it at all and always trust my gut when I get feelings like that, so I started to wake up my girlfriend. Just as she was starting to wake up, I heard what sounded like someone shouting, kind of like a hoo or ha, further down the hill into the meadow. I would have disregarded it, but it caught me off guard a bit since it sounded almost doubled, like the person had a chorus pedal or pitch shifter on their voice. It spooked me a bit because of that and I hadn't heard anyone yell like that before. I finished waking up my girlfriend, and we drove away from there into an elementary school parking lot down the road from the hill leading to the new development. I told her what happened, and we joked about it being spooky and whatnot. I then looked up videos to try and find something that matched what I had heard, and skinwalker screams and vocalizations were what matched up most. Unfortunately, I scrolled into the comments, which mentioned that the further away the scream is, the closer it is to you. It spooked me for a moment, but I chalked it all up to coincidence. For fun, we decided to drive down the hill to the new development as it's dark and spooky, it is woods on one side where the park is and has a gravel turnaround for vehicles with a gate at the end where the gravel path starts. As we were going down the hill near the top, I got a very strange and uneasy feeling, almost like a slight panic, but it went away shortly after we got to the bottom of the hill. My girlfriend said she got the feeling as well, so we decided to turn around on a side street and leave. I decided to play some music that always helps take the scared feelings away from me, the Doom Eternal soundtrack, specifically Super Gore Nest, and put the pedal to the metal on the accelerator whilst going up the hill to make me feel more comfortable and like nothing could touch me. When we were about three quarters of the way up the hill, the feeling came back and hit us full force. The closer we got to the top, where the trail came out, the stronger it got. The only way I can describe it is pure terror. It wasn't fear or dread, it was terror. We both had a physical reaction to it. We got intense chills, and we could feel the goosebumps on our skin all over our body. We both started to get choked up and teary-eyed, and I became short of breath for a minute. I must have gone from 60 km per hour up the hill, the limit is 50, to 80 after cresting the hill, and it felt like if we stopped, we surely would have died. It was the most petrifying experience either of us has had, we didn't even see anything. I've driven past many animals at night, from deer to bears to coyotes, etc., and have been outside walking home alone at night with a bear going through garbage cans at my neighbor's houses. I've dirt biked past a mama bear with cubs and a mama moose, and I thought those were scary experiences. No scary experience I've had, from a car accident when I was young to almost being hit four times doing road construction by dumb drivers, can even come close to the feeling I had that night.
The Doom soundtrack turned the feeling of being a badass into feeling like it would be the anthem of my death. It was truly the most terrifying experience of my life. After getting out of Dodge, we went to a well-lit mall parking lot and calmed down for a bit, still shaken. I drove my girlfriend home and had a very anxiety and fear-ridden drive home, as the park across from my house is only 150-ish meters away from where the encounter took place. When I got home, I made sure everything was locked up tight, had a little bit of weed to calm down, and then went to bed while on video call with my girlfriend. That night, around 3.30 to 3.45 a.m., I woke up and had a mild return of the panic feeling for around 5 minutes before falling back asleep. I dreamt of the experience the entire night. The next morning, my girlfriend told me she heard tapping on my window at around 3 a.m., which made me shudder as my window is around 9 feet off the ground. I don't know what to make of the experience and would appreciate some guidance into what this may have been. I've never liked walking in those woods alone, as I always get a creepy feeling, but I'm definitely not walking to my house alone at night ever again. We're going to go back and drive there at night again to see if it happens again. I'm not sure if that's a stupid idea, but my curiosity about cryptids and the like has peaked, and I need to know what's lurking around here. This event happened to me and a friend from out of town that I had invited to go hunting one afternoon. This location was in South Louisians in an area with thick woods up to 6 feet high in some places, and the water we had to walk in to get to my deer stands was up to our waist at times, so it was slow moving in the mile we had to walk to our deer stands, and my friend wasn't used to this tough terrain, but he kept up, and when I got to the first stand, which was 15 off the ground with a ladder to climb up, and once he was up, I told him I would be by to pick him up about a half hour after dark since I was a half mile past him. We handed a full moon that was reflecting off the water, allowing us to hunt a few minutes longer, and when it became too dark to see, I climbed down from my deer stand with my rifle on my shoulder and started walking slowly towards my friend to pick him up. When I was almost to his stand, I shined my light. Up and he wasn't in the stand, so I shined my light on the ground at the bottom of the stand, and there he was leaning back against the tree the stand was on, and what was odd was that he wouldn't look my way even after. Me calling his name, so I walked up to him within a couple feet and asked if he was ready to go and that's when he finally turned his head and looked towards me, and what I saw in his face scared me so bad that I took my rifle off my shoulder, putting it between me and him. His eyes were rolled back in his head, and his mouth was wide open. He was just standing there looking at me, not saying a word, and not answering me when I was asking what was wrong. So there I was, a mile back in the woods with solid palmettos and up to my waist in water, with my good friend looking at me as if he were possessing something, and yes, at this point, I was scared, so I finally slapped his face, and he snapped back to himself. I asked if he was okay, his only words were let's get out of here now, so with me not knowing what was going on, I made him walk in front of me the whole way back to the truck, and we got in and left without saying a word. I asked him what happened in the woods and why he looked shocked, and that's when he stared, crying, and started telling me how he was sitting there in the stand when he heard something coming through the water. Paul Meadows as it was walking, and when it got close enough to see what it was, he said it was a man that looked like he had been skinned alive, he had no skin at all on him, and he said he was so scared that after this thing had passed him, he climbed down and hid under the stand against the tree so it wouldn't see him if it came back. He was in shock when I got to him, that's why he had looked like he did, he was so shook up and crying that I made him pull over for me to drive. Well, a week went by and I was talking to my little cousin, who had gone on a tour at a near Indian memorial and they were explaining how this Indian tribe would skin men of the tribe alive and turn them loose in the woods when they had committed a serious crime in the tribe, and my friend, who had witnessed this skinned man a week earlier, wasn't from around this area and had no way of knowing this, so what did he see that put him in shock? Was it a ghost of one of these Indians who was skinned alive years ago? I don't know, I just know the shape my friend was in when I got to him that night in the woods, something I will never forget. The day this story took place was on my 21st birthday. The day started like any other. On this day, my brother and his girlfriend, who is also my best friend, and a couple of our friends, whose names were James and Stephanie, we went to Fargo, North Dakota, to go to the mall. We had spent a couple of hours there and were now making our way back. My brother decided to give me one of my birthday gifts because I'm a smoker. His girl got me an ashtray. Made me laugh. Then we stopped at a store, they bought something else for the special day but wouldn't tell me what it was. As we got back to our town, we stopped by our Jesus tree dealer, if you know what I mean. We had eaten almost an ounce. Then we were off to go smoke and blaze our brains out. We were stuck, asking each other where to go and smoke. I blurted out Sika Hollow, which, in translation, means bad grounds. I, my brother, and two of our friends said hell yeah, but my brother girl was saying no, but we went anyways much to her protest. 
As we were driving out to seek a hollow, a car started following us. We all started to get scared because my brother doesn't have a driver's license, and on top of that, we had almost an ounce of marijuana in the car. The faster it went, the faster the car was going. When we pulled into the parking lot of the hollow, my brother's girl said that her sister was following us, so we all let our breaths go. Skip forward a little bit, and we started to walk on the trails. These trails go all over Sika Hollow. As we were walking, I noticed the sounds of branches being stepped on, but they were coming from more up the hill next to us. I'm the only one who hears it because I'm in the back of the group. I looked around and wondered why someone was up there in the brush, but I kept going. I realized I forgot my glasses, but I could still see even though I was legally blind. So as I was walking, I noticed from my brief moment of looking down that my brother and our friends were gone. Like, what the hell? Then, all of a sudden, I heard a thud like someone jumping onto the ground. I turned around, and I already knew what was behind me. I grew up with the stories, the stories of my people using sacred medicines for power. As I turned, I spoke to it, what do you want, cousin? It looked at me and screamed this unholy scream. I didn't flinch, but I did pull out one of my cigarettes and pray as I spilled the tobacco on the ground. I told it that it had no reason to bother me, my brother, or our friends. Now, what do you want? It spoke as if it were my grandma and said, get your asses home. I told it that it was not to use my grandma's voice. I turned and said, be gone, bother me, and let my grandma rest in peace. When I turned, I saw my brother. He told me that when he turned around, I was gone. So he and our friend Ja? S went back and looked, but couldn't find me anyway. Then they heard that awful scream. They started yelling my name, but with no response. They told me that when they smelled the scent of a cigarette, they came running. We had found one of the benches where we sat as my brother asked, wanna smoke? I said, hell yeah. My best friend looked at me and noticed my face had a sense of anger, but thankfully I didn't say anything. We hiked back down to the car. When we get in, my brother pulls out a huge bottle of liquor, I don't remember what kind, but it tastes like vodka. So we start to blaze as he cracks the huge bottle open. We sit there laughing and talking for a couple hours. When I noticed it, it was dark as hell now. All of a sudden, my best friend starts freaking out. What the hell is that, pinting towards the head of one trail? Their standing was the damn thing I told you to leave us alone. It was waving in a jerky way. I tell everyone to roll up the windows. My friend James says, this is some good stuff and takes another hit of the blunt. I tell him it's real. So he starts freaking out. Then, in a flash, this thing was at the front of the car, waving. I light my sage I have in my medicine box, which I take everywhere. I say a prayer and open my window. As soon as I did that, it screamed and yelled at me and my brother to get our asses home, but in our grandpa's voice, I knew that it would not use our grandma's voice. As we stared, it crept back into the Sika hollow woods. We burned rubber, leaving. It's been about two years since this encounter, and I decided to see if anybody else has encountered this same species. I was having a middle of the night drive and decided to pull into a park when I saw about 10 glowing blue people jogging on a path out of the woods. They looked no taller than 5 feet, and I thought of them as children. Their faces were more white than blue, and I couldn't make out facial features, just white light. Their whole bodies seemed to be composed of a glowing blue light, but they were in the same shape as humans. They were in a single file line, and I couldn't believe my eyes, so I turned my head, blinked a few times, and looked back, and they were still jogging. I watched them for about 20 seconds until they followed the path behind a building and into the woods. I have never seen them again. My biggest regret is not following them. So this has been going on for a few years now. The first time I encountered it, I was chopping on a tree with a hatchet on the edge of the woods, and after a while, I got this creeping sense of fear coming over me. I started to look around to see if there was any type of animal or anything, but I didn't see anything. Then I decide I've had enough of being creeped out and start to head back to my house, the feeling of being watched has still not gone away. I look back at the tree, and I see a humanoid creature prowling low to the ground next to the tree. Its grey skin was tight against its body, sharp claws protruding out of its fingers. Empty eyes are staring right at me. I promptly go inside. A few months later, I saw it again. It was the middle of the night, and I had gotten up to go to the bathroom. My room is at the end of the hallway, so I have plenty of time to look out the window next to the bathroom door. While looking through it, I saw something staring back, with the same empty eyes as before. When it noticed that I saw it, it ran off. The third time I met it, my friend had come over to stay the night. We were going through a closet in an extra room and found some cool jackets. We decided it would be fun to go around outside wearing them. 
It was dark out, we were not out there for long before we started hearing things. It was at the edge of the woods, near where I had seen it before. What we were hearing were footsteps, like a person walking around, heavy stomping in the brush. So the smart kids decided to start making noises and throwing sticks and stuff at it. To try and get a reaction out of it, and we did. First came the smell. Imagine the worst smell you've smelt, and it's worse. We stopped for a minute because the smell was so bad, and then the footsteps stopped. We thought okay, it left, but nope, we started to hear it running towards us. We didn't stick around to find out what it was and ran into the house. The fourth time I encountered it, a couple of my friends came out to stay the night. We were kids and liked to play hide and seek outside, but only when the moon was gone, so it was harder to see. It was mine and a friend's turn to hide, so we hid in this shed type thing off the side of the garage. The front of it was open, and the side towards the woods was halfway open. I was hiding behind this piece of metal that was leaning against the half open wall. By this time, the seeker should have been outside, trying to find us. He was not. I could see the door where he should have come out, but he never did. After a while of sitting there and talking to my other friend, who had hidden in there too, I hear footsteps outside in the gravel coming from the woods, I ask my friend if they hear it, and they say yes. We get quiet and think it was the seeker, but I had never seen him go out the door. I just think, oh, he went out the front door to trick us. I was wrong. The smell returned, and the footsteps got closer. It comes up to the wall and leans into the room. I can see its long, deformed foot and its sharp claws instead of toenails. Then I see the seeker come out the door, and so does it. It walks off, not in a hurry. After it goes, I sit there for a while, my heart beating at 100 beats per minute, and ask my friend if they saw it. They said they heard it. I call the seeker and ask them to help me out, I do not want to stay out there any longer. So the fifth time I encountered it, it happened a few months ago now. The same two friends from before had come out for the day to hang out. So we did for the day and had a good time and all. We were chilling at this park area on my property, right next to the woods where it resides. It was pitch black out, of course, but the park had lights, which we had on. So after a while of talking, I needed to go to the bathroom or get something from the house. When I get back, the lights at the park have been turned off. I turn on the flashlight on my phone and head over there. I find friend 1 sitting in the chair where they had been. I ask them where friend 2 went, and they say they don't know. I tell them to help me find friend 2. We walk around for a while, trying to call him and stuff. Then we hear someone walking back and forth in the woods. It's kind of by the road. We all went out to it, thinking it was friend 2, and we slowly went towards it after a few seconds of walking to it. Friend 2 comes over from the opposite direction and says not to go over there. He explains how he's been hearing noises and stuff coming from over there for a while now. While we were talking, we noticed that it was completely still outside, no noises or anything, which was weird. Then we started hearing noises from across the road, and we were like, that's messed up. Then I decided to cross the fence and go over there. It was the same walking back and forth that I've heard before, like it was trying to get us to follow it. I tell them that I think that and to stay back. We decided to throw stuff and make noises at it to make it go away, but it never did. We waited there till their parents came to get them, and then they did. Then I ran as fast as I could back to my house. So if this sounds like a flesh gate, please let me know. Also, there is an Indian burial ground a few miles away. About a year ago, I moved my family and myself to a home way out in the woods in Tennessee. I want to be brief here, but I need to get this off my chest. The nights here can be extremely loud. Between the crickets, the tree frogs, and the secedes, it can almost be deafening. One night, not too long after we moved in, I forgot something in my car and headed outside to get it. The first thing that struck me as odd was that my dog wouldn't go outside with me. My dog goes everywhere with me, as I am her whole world. But not this night. As I held the door open, she looked out, then looked up at me like nope. So I walked out and shut the door behind me. The second thing that caught me off guard was that there was not a peep, it was dead silent. I still shrugged this off, walked down my front steps, and headed down to my car. When I had gotten about 10 feet from my car, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I felt as though something was watching me. I looked around but saw nothing. After I reached in my car for what I had forgotten to grab earlier, I had this feeling like something was moving towards me. I took a step back and checked around me. All of a sudden, I heard one of my hedges next to me that lined the walkway to our front door rattle. At first, I thought it was a rabbit that I had spooked, as I had seen one just earlier in the day right where this was. A few seconds later, I heard the sound of a large rock, about the size of a cantaloupe, landing a few feet away from me. It hit the walkway and bounced into a shrub. 
I drew my gun and called out that whoever this was was about to be shot. After a few seconds of nothing, I began to think that maybe this was some local teenagers messing with the new people. I holstered my side arm, turned, and started walking back to my front door. Almost as soon as I turned towards my house, I heard this deep panting sound. It sounded like a huge dog, but what made me nope back to my front door was that it sounded like it was right behind me. I leapt up onto my porch, turned, and drew my gun again, expecting something right there, but again, there was nothing. A couple weeks later, I was on my porch at night, sitting on a bench with my wife. She got up and walked inside to get something, and as soon as she shut the door, I heard that panting sound again. I couldn't see anything, yet this sounded like it was right on top of me. The sound was coming from everywhere, and it was very loud. Again, I couldn't see anything, so I noped it back inside my house. At this point, I was questioning moving here, but after nothing else really happened, I let it go. This was until last night, fast forward about a year, and my niece is staying with us as a live-in nanny to earn money over the summer break from college. We were on our way back from the store and about a mile from our house, and I saw two eyes reflecting in the headlights coming from a wide tree on the side of the road just ahead. It had caught my attention because they were higher than a deer but a different color and size. Just as I had said, what is that? And squinted, they vanished. I had made a comment that it was almost as if it had known I could see its eyes and moved. The color was kind of a golden green, but they resembled the mannerism of a large cat, as they felt ominous. It's hard to explain, but I shrugged it off as we were passing the tree and saw nothing. A few moments later, we arrived at the house. As we were getting bags out of the car, my three-year-old son came bolting out of the house, excited to see me. As I was waiting to help her carry her bags, I heard my dog growl. I looked in the direction she was looking at my neighbor's property across the street. Now what I saw has kept me up all night. Up until this point, I have always been skeptical, as I have never seen anything with my own two eyes. Even with what had happened to me the year prior, I still had my doubts that it was just my mind playing tricks on me. Now my street is kind of a spread out neighborhood. Each house sits on several acres, and at the end of our road is Kentucky Lake. My neighbor's house sits adjacent to my house on about an acre of land. Directly in front of my house is a wall of woods, and directly behind my house are several thousand acres of untouched forest. As I was looking across the street to my neighbor's property, I saw a large, dark figure between the trees at first. The movement caught me off guard, as it looked like something big was moving quickly on all fours. Then, when it came out into clear view, it stood up and walked like a man. At first, I didn't know what to make of it. It was very tall, but what was strange about it was the distance it was covering and the fact that when it was in front of its shed, I swear I could see through it. It was clearly walking quickly but moving faster than any person could at a sprint. More importantly, there was no sound. I said, what the hell is that? And realized that it was looking directly at us. It had moved at an angle away from us to minimize its time out in the open and was moving as quickly as it could while still being silent. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up as I realized that whatever it was was stalking us. I told my niece, get in the house now. And I grabbed my son and booked it inside. I grabbed my rifle and came back outside to see my niece still grabbing stuff out of her car, knowing I told her firmly and clearly to get in the house, her disregard for my command annoyed me, but still, I watched over her without saying a word. As she was slowly walking, she turned towards the woods across the street from my house and suddenly bolted for the house. She ran up the steps in a panic state. I asked her what she saw, and her face was pale as a ghost. She said, I heard something big in the woods walking loudly on the leaves, and when I turned toward it, I heard a deep guttural growl. I asked her why she didn't come when I told her, and she said she thought that I was talking to my son. I told her what I had seen, and she wanted to get a closer look to see if she could see something. I told her that it was not a good idea, and she went anyway. As she was walking down the walkway, I heard the sound of dry leaves crunching in the woods across the street. I told her to stop and come take the flashlight. At this point, she is about six feet away from my wife's SUV. As she turned and started walking back to me, I caught a glimpse of something gray and hairy bolting from behind the SUV back across the street into the woods. My porch is a raised porch, and our SUV is about 6.5 feet tall, and whatever this was, it cleared about 30 feet in what looked like a single jump. It moved like lightning. Whatever it was, it wanted my niece. It jumped behind the car, out of my line of sight, and was waiting for her. She still doubted my warnings, grabbed the flashlight, and walked back toward the car. As she entered my driveway, she stopped dead in her tracks and froze. I asked her what she saw. She turned and ran back up on the porch. She said that she could see a gray figure hiding in a tree and that she saw its eyes. I asked her what they looked like, 
and all she could say was that they looked dull red at first, but as she got closer, they looked dead. I said, what do you mean dead? And she said that where the pupils were, they looked gray, like the way eyes look when they go blind. She also said it was really dark gray, and she swears she could see through it almost like a dark cloud. She wanted to go out again and took a step down the stairs, and as she did, it revealed itself from the tree. I said get inside, and I went in and locked the door. The next morning, we did a height comparison to the tree limb, she saw it stand over, and it put its height at around 9 feet tall, and its eyes were about 6 inches apart. At this point, I don't know what this thing is. I looked online in Tennessee, and the closest thing that I could find was the Tennessee Wildman, but that hasn't been spotted in Benton County. More importantly, I swear it would phase in and out almost like a shadow, but bigger and more obvious. Does anyone know what this thing is? At this point, I don't know what to make of it. So in my sophomore year of college, me and my best friend decided to take an Adderall so we could stay up all night and write the papers that were due that week. So we did it, and we stayed up really late and finally finished. It was about 3 a.m. when we decided to go get some food and smoke a joint. So we get in the car, get the food, and decide to smoke in the car at her apartment complex with the windows down. I'm not sure if you have ever had a bug on your body and felt it, yet ignored it because you were just busy or thought it was something else, only to finally look and see that it really was a big ducking bug. That's what this next part was like. So as soon as we pulled into the parking spot, which was facing head-on towards a big opening of woods, I felt like something was weird. But I just took a few bites of my food and rolled the joint anyway, thinking I was just spooking myself, but the whole time something felt off, and I felt like I could see something in the forest. The beginning of the forest was about 8 feet from my car. Finally, when we've been smoking the joint for about 2 minutes, I decide to actually look harder at the woods and the movement I was seeing. Immediately, as I look closer, I see two huge yellow eyes staring back at me. It was like they were just really big eyes on a white face peeking at me through the bush. Terrifying enough as it is, it doesn't end here. As soon as I make eye contact with it, the monster or man starts coming straight for my car. Note that my lights were on, so whatever or whoever this was, we definitely knew we were in there, and I know it had been watching for a long time because of the weird feelings I had before. I knew it had been staring right at my eyes for a while because, when I finally looked, we made direct eye contact. It starts walking towards me, making direct eye contact with me still. At first, me and my friend thought it was a police officer because we had weed, but it suddenly became clear that it was no police officer, and we weren't sure it was even human. This thing was either a man dressed like a monster or it was a monster. It looked like it had a mask of pale white, rotting skin on its face. I was so scared that I had a lot of trouble driving away. My first instinct was to hide and slide low in my seat, but I knew it was coming for me. I stared at the thing in paralyzed fear as it came closer and closer to me. I can't describe to you exactly what it was wearing or what it looked like because it doesn't make any sense, it's like my mind can't even go there. All I know is that it has the physique of a man, but the limbs are way too long. It looked like a slender man but was different, like it definitely had a face. Finally, I threw my car in reverse just in time, thank goodness it was already on and I didn't have to search for the key or anything. When I finally was able to pull away, it was standing in the very parking spot I had just been parked in. Me and my friend called the police and told them there was a monster or a man in the woods. They said they checked but found nothing. We had been in my best friend's apartment complex when this happened, so we had to live with this memory every day. I have never walked to my apartment from my car without being on the phone with someone since that night, and it is four years later. It haunts me, and I hate that someone or something has scarred me so much just by having had one insane encounter. It all started on a road trip through the national parks out west. My friends, 22, and I wanted a fun way to celebrate graduating from college, especially after such a crazy year, getting sent home during our final semester due to COVID and graduating online. We hoped that some fresh air would rejuvenate us before we started real adult life in our jobs. We had all decided to meet at our favorite bar near our college for one final drink to reminisce about the great times we had had. We drove around the eerily empty campus, there wasn't a soul in sight. This probably should have just been a sign for us to cancel, as the pandemic certainly wasn't showing signs of stopping, but we ignored it. We were simply too excited. About 160 miles into our trip, we ran into our first of many problems, the car began to overheat. Don't get me wrong, it was a newer BMW, so we didn't think that anything like this was going to happen, but German cars will be German cars. We took it to an auto shop and got it fixed in a couple hours, as it was an easy coolant leak and it just needed a new hose. This was another sign that we all just chose to overlook. Oh, how I wish we would've just cut our losses and gone home at this point. 
Nevertheless, we trekked on, going another few hundred miles without any issues. We were all so excited, signing our favorite songs, playing random apps to pass the time, and judging random girls on Tinder that we matched with along the way. However, it was around St. Louis that we would run into our second problem, a flat tire. Once again, we ignored this sign and pulled into a random tire shop, got it fixed, and were on our way once again. After two days of driving, we finally reached Denver. We saw this as a great point to stop for a day and enjoy the city. While it was still pretty much shut down, we still made the most of our time there. We then continued the next day, hoping to reach Yellowstone by night, but would run into another big issue, we popped yet another tire. Once again, we were near a city, Casper, Wyoming, so we were able to get it fixed quickly and continue our trip the next day. This should have been the final straw. We should have turned back. We had already blown through most of our budget just fixing the car. However, we thought, we've already made it this far, and what else can go wrong? Oh, how we were wrong. When we pulled into the campsite the next day, we eagerly set up our tents and went on a quick hike. Somehow, we were the only ones at our campsite, as people were still afraid of the pandemic. At the time, we saw this as a massive plus because it meant we could get as drunk and rowdy as we wanted that night, and as the sun set, that's exactly what we did. However, something felt off the whole time. You know that feeling when you walk in the woods late at night and you just feel like you aren't alone? Is someone or something watching you? You don't belong there, and you are intruding on someone else's territory. That's exactly how I felt the entire time. So, while my friends were getting blasted, I built as big of a fire as I could, hoping to give myself a sense of safety and ease my anxiety. Once I finished, however, a feeling of dread washed over me. I had never felt so scared in my entire life. It came out of nowhere without any explanation. I decided to call it a night after this, hoping that I could just sleep it off while my friends carelessly drank and played loud music that echoed throughout the valley. I was able to fall asleep until around 3.40, when I was awoken by something scratching the ground outside of our tent. I quickly woke up my friend, asking what the FK that was. He groggily told me that it was probably a bear because they had left some garbage on the ground. I went back to sleep, foolishly trusting my friend's explanation. I would wake up a couple more times before the sun rose, hearing more noises throughout the early morning. When we all woke up, we got out of the tent to find enormous scratch marks all over the ground surrounding our tent. It almost looked like they formed a big circle around our tent. And these were no ordinary marks, they were made up of three distinct lines going nearly two inches into the dry dirt. My friends decided to once again blame a bear, despite the trash being left alone and no visible tracks. While this spooked me, I knew that we were all larger guys and were armed with large knives, we all bought them for this trip as a joke in case we ran into Bigfoot, but that's a story for another time. We continued our day like the one before going on long hikes throughout the park, enjoying our last full day there before moving on to the next park. I don't know why we did this. I wish we hadn't done this. But before going to bed that night, we jokingly made Bigfoot calls to lure back whatever creature had bothered us the night before. We scurried back into the tent and got into our sleeping bags, the way little kids do when they know they aren't supposed to be up during a sleepover and hear a parent coming down the stairs. Anyway, the forest seemed particularly loud as we were trying to go to sleep. There were so many different bugs and little animals rustling through the brush nearby, it all seemed normal. However, I woke up around 1.45 to something very different. The entire forest had gone silent. I had heard that when the woods go silent, a predator is nearby. I chalked this up to being the bear from the night before paying us yet another visit. Hoping to catch a glimpse of this bear, I slowly unzipped the door with my flashlight, aiming out towards the woods. That's when I saw it. Oh, how this image still haunts me to this day. Standing only 10 feet away from our tent was a massive, pale creature. On all fours, it had to have been around 4 and a half minus 5 feet tall. It had grossly long arms with three sharp claws. To put it into perspective, one of its hands was next to a Bud Light bottle and the claw was the same size. Thankfully, it was facing away at the time, so I quickly turned off my flashlight and re-zipped the tent. I silently awoke my friends and whispered what was going on to them as they slowly woke up. Obviously, none of them believed me, so they reached for their lights and reopened the door to the tent. Standing there, now five feet from the tent, was the creature. This is when we saw their eyes. They had huge, black eyes. It felt like they were looking right through me into my soul. It stood there silently, almost as if it were sizing us up and determining if we were worth the effort. Full of fear, one of my friends made a quick movement to grab his knife. The creature made a blood-curdling screech, revealing its razor-sharp teeth. It leapt onto our tent, landing on top and crushing us below. 
It began wildly scratching at it, tearing apart the tent with mad fury. We scrambled to get out any way we could, hoping to escape our near certain deaths. A friend and I were able to squeeze out through cuts in the tent while the other two were still stuck in the tent under the crushing weight of the creature. My friend and I knew that we would have to get the creature away from the tent if we wanted our friends to survive. I quickly ran to the nearly dead fire and grabbed one of the few sticks still lit in the hopes of scaring it off. I sprinted at the creature, looking like a wild man with a torch. However, this only seemed to startle the creature. It took a few steps off of the tent and then stopped, almost as if it were gathering itself and attacking once again. My two friends, still stuck in the tent, took this as an opportunity to get out, as there likely wouldn't be another one. We all ran for the car as fast as we could. We were not looking back as we slammed the doors shut behind us. Right as the last door shut, we felt the creature slam into the trunk of the SUV, shaking the whole car. It rammed the car a few more times before starting to circle it, staring us down. Luckily, my friend had left his keys in the car because we had been the only ones at the campsite, so he was able to start it. This allowed us to get a better view of the creature as its off-white skin reflected LED lights back at us. It was then that the scariest part of the whole experience happened. The creature slowly approached my door, taking cautious step after cautious step. I quickly locked my door and cowered in fear with my other friend in the back seat. As it got closer, it began looking directly at the handle. It slowly reached out its arm and stuck its claw in between the handle and the door, almost as if it had opened a car door before. It tried to pull the handle multiple times, getting angrier with each failed attempt. Luckily, at this moment, my friend, who had been paralyzed with fear, snapped out of it, put the car in drive, and floored it. I have never seen anyone drive faster in my life. We zipped through the roads as fast as we could, not even checking the rearview mirror to see if it was chasing us. We finally stopped once we made it to Cody, Wyoming. We needed to fill up our tank, as we were running very low after such intense driving. We got out to look at the damage, specifically the rear. The entire back hatch had been dented by several inches. I think this was when we realized how close the creature was to killing us inside the car. One more hit, and the trunk door would have fallen off, giving it access to four tasty humans trapped in an aluminum can. We eventually made it back to our campus, where we split up and went our separate ways. I think my friend told his parents that a truck pulled a hit, a run, or something to explain the damage, but we all knew we couldn't tell anyone about our experience or be called liars or crazy. This was something that continues to haunt me to this day, which is why I will never visit a national park again as long as I live. Take this story as a warning to avoid them unless you want to come face to face with a monster.